Next, we are going to create expense and category entities in Core Data and create a relationship between them. Let's edit our Core Data model and let's add an entity. To add an entity, we click the Add Entity button and a new entity is born with the name Entity. Let's change this right now to Expense. Expense should have three attributes, one for the name, amount, and date. So to create a new expense, navigate to the Attributes section and click the plus button to add a new item. Here we should give the attribute a name. In this instance, it would be name. And the type for name should be string. Now let's add another attribute for amount. And this type should be of type double and another one for date. Date will actually be of type nsDate when we generate our subclasses. And so to keep that in mind, let's call this raw date. Raw date should have a type of date. And again, since the core data is backed by Objective-C, this date is not of the Swift date, but of a NS date. And we'll handle that later in a different video. Now that we have our expense entity, let's create another entity called category. So I go down to the add entity button, I click it, we get a new entity, let's change this name to category, and select it. Category should only have a single attribute for its title. So navigate to the attributes section, press add items, Give the attribute a name of title, and title will be of type string. We have two entities, and our job is to create a relationship between them. A category contains many expenses, but an expense only belongs ever to one category. So we need to establish this relationship. The very first thing that we're to do to establish this relationship is when we have an entity selected, go down to the relationship section, click the plus button, and here we need to give it a couple different values. First, we need to give it a relationship name. Here is our opportunity to give this relationship a name. And again, this is backed by Objective-C, so I'm gonna preface this relationship name with raw, and let's call it expenses and we need to select the destination. The destination is where this relationship goes to. Raw expense or raw expenses? Raw expenses. Okay. Plural, because many expenses per one category. The destination is where this relationship is pointing to. So select destination and select expense. We're not actually gonna give it an inverse at this time, but we will in a moment. With this relationship selected, go over to the data model inspector and let's look at a couple different things. The very first thing that we should look at is the type. There is two different types, two one and two many. Two one says if this relationship exists, we're only gonna ever have one of the destination. Two many says we'll have multiple of the destinations, which sounds right for this instance, Dale. Well, the category is going to have multiple expenses, so too many. Too many. When we select too many in the data model inspector, we get a few more options. Arrangement, ordered, and then count, min, and max. Arrangement, ordered. So ultimately, this is going to be backed by an NS set. NS sets do not have given orders for the elements within it, but you can enforce that if you click order. So click order right now and we want our expenses to be in a specific order, so check that box. Next, the thing to look at is delete rule. There's a few different delete rules, and we're gonna actually select cascade. What cascade says is if we delete our category, then it, that should be cascaded to all of its, its expenses. Exactly what we want. So now that we've created the relationship in expenses, we also need to create the relationship over in expense. So navigate to the expense entity, go down to the relationship section, select add items, name this category, 
And for this relationship, the destination should be category. And now that we've done this, we can actually create an inverse for this relationship by selecting our relationship from category raw expenses. What this allows core data to do is if you establish a relationship on one of the entities, it'll actually propagate to the other so you can access its category from the expense or the expenses from its category without any issue. If I have this relationship selected, let's look over the data model inspector, we're actually gonna leave the type to one. What this says is an expense can only belong ever to one category, meaning multiple categories cannot hold on to the same expense. This is exactly what we want. The delete rule we're gonna leave is nullify. What this means is if this expense um, is deleted, then the reference in our category expense will essentially be null, meaning it does no not longer exist. So what this is saying is if we delete the category, all expenses should be deleted. If we delete an expense, only that expense should be deleted. So I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, first, when we're on category, you said that the relationship is raw expenses, but when we're expense, you just call the relationship category. Can you explain why this is raw expenses? So in a relationship, when you have too many, the type that it is of is NS set or NS ordered set. And this is because you essentially want an array of expenses, but since it's backed by core data and each of these entities have to be unique in that array, it's backed by an NS set. So since this is too many, I call it raw because ultimately we will create a computed property to get an array of our expenses. If I navigate to our expense entity, I call this category because in a 2-1 relationship, category is just that. It's of type category. It's no core data back. It's actually backed by our own entity type. Okay. And back here again on uh, raw expenses, you indicated that these are ordered. Uh, how do we know what they're ordered by? W they will be ordered by your insertion of it at the time, or you can sort it and enforce that ordering after the fact. And then I noticed also on both category and expense that code gen is set to class definition. Should that be changed? So yes, that definitely should be changed and that's when you generate the NS manage object subclass. So select each entity, go to manual none, go back to expense, select code gen, manual none, and ensure that these are selected, else you'll get some errors. So go back to category, cogen, manual, none, expense, manual, none. And then in the next video, we'll actually be writing the subclasses for each of these, which will begin with doing the code generation for each class.